Jack, hey, wake up, wake up. Oh, mom, not this again. When are you going to stop with your silly tricks of waking me up at ungodly hours? You seem to have a knack for disturbing people, don't you? Well, why don't you go and bother someone else? I don't want to be the victim of your ridiculous hobby. What? Jack, are you really angry with me? Ugh, whatever. But I just wanted to let you know that it's already 8 in the morning. Don't you have to go to work? You're running late. Wait, what? 8 in the morning? Are you serious? Oh no, I overslept. Mom, why didn't you wake me up earlier? I can't believe this. Oh, Jack, here we go again. Always playing the victim card, aren't you? I guess it's just easier for you to deflect any responsibility and blame me for everything. But let me remind you, I have been nothing but supportive and caring as a mother. I've sacrificed so much for you. And this is the gratitude I get? Yes, you felt disappointed in that moment. But instead of having a mature conversation about it, you lashed out on me and accused me of not caring. Typical. You always find a way to make everything about yourself and twist the situation to fit your narrative. What? That's not fair, Mom. I'm not trying to make everything about myself. I was just expressing my frustration at the moment. Can't you see that? Oh, I see it all too well, Jack. It's always about your frustration, your stress, your needs. What about my needs? What about the countless times I've had to put aside my own desires to take care of you? But of course, you wouldn't understand that, would you? It's all about you. What? Of course, my needs need to be prioritized the most. I'm your son, the future heir. Just remember the day you gave birth to me and realized I'm a boy. Well, that was wonderful, right? Because grandma really wanted a boy so that he could inherit and take over the whole thing when he grows older. And finally, I am here. I am your golden child. Because of me, you don't have to suffer from the terrible anger of grandma. You know it, right? She's been really easy on you these days because you gave her a grandson. <laughs> so I am the best and most important person in this house, for goodness sake. Oh, please, Jack. Don't try to twist the situation around and make it about how you supposedly saved me. You have a habit of exaggerating and blowing things out of proportion. And now you're expecting me to be grateful for your exaggerated heroics? Saving me from my so-called miserable life? That's rich coming from you. I've worked hard and made sacrifices to provide for you and give you a good life. I don't need your condescending attitude and false sense of superiority. Well, maybe if you actually appreciated what I did for you, we wouldn't be having this argument right now. I can't believe you're brushing off something so significant. I expected at least a little bit of gratitude, but I guess that's too much to ask from you. Gratitude? For what exactly? For your self-righteousness and entitlement? Sorry, but I don't owe you gratitude for saving me from a life that I never asked to be saved from. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself, thank you very much. You know what, Jack? Let's not waste our time arguing over this anymore. I have more important things to worry about than your inflated ego and need for validation. By the way, have you seen my $500 on the makeup table? It seems to have mysteriously disappeared. Oh, so now you conveniently changed the subject to money. Typical. You always find a way to prioritize material positions over our relationship. No, I haven't seen your precious $500. Maybe you misplaced it. But I'm sure you'll find a way to blame me for that too. Don't you dare twist my words, Jack. I'm simply asking about the money because it's significant to me. It's not about prioritizing material possessions over our relationship. And if you can't help me find it or provide any useful information, then there's no need for you to continue this conversation. Fine, whatever. I have better things to do than engage in this pointless back and forth with you. And just mind your behavior towards me. I just can't imagine that you could act like that to your own blooded son. You're the most cruel mother. Are you seeing me as a thief? I'm beginning to think that you're not my mom. It's just a shame to have a mom like you. You're disgusting. Ugh, how could I even express my hatred to you? Oh my god. You say that once more, I'll kick you out. And instead of arguing with me over nothing like this, why don't you pack your things and go to your workplace? 
Isn't it more worth doing? I changed my mind. Since you show that kind of terrible attitude towards me, I just lost my enthusiasm to go to work. I'm gonna go to bed again and don't even dare to call me again. It's getting on my nerves. What? So you just decide to speak against me like this? How could you be that naughty and ungrateful? I just can't believe I could raise such a horrible child like you in my life. Like I care. <laughs> Hey, where are you right now, Layla? I've been looking for you. I'm downstairs, in the kitchen. Haven't you gone to bed yet? How could I hit the hay when my wife is down there working? Do you need any help? Actually, I'm arranging stuff in the house a little bit. What? Why do you have to do that? I thought you did it like two days ago. Am I wrong? Layla, I know you always want the house to be fresh and clean, but you shouldn't force yourself like that. Your health is much more important. Just think about that. Think about how I could handle everything when you get ill. It would be a really huge loss if you fall ill one day. So could you just listen to me this time? Well, actually, I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed lately. With work, taking care of the kids, and managing the household. It's been a lot to handle. I find that organizing and tidying up the house helps me clear my mind and feel more in control. It's like a form of therapy for me. I understand that you find it therapeutic, but you need to remember to take care of yourself too. It's not fair for you to shoulder all the burden while I just sit back and relax. We're a team, Layla, and we should be sharing the responsibilities. I appreciate your concern, Dean, and I agree we should share the responsibilities. But please understand that organizing the house is something that I genuinely enjoy doing. It brings me a sense of satisfaction and calmness. It's not about trying to be perfect or meeting some unrealistic standard. It's just a way for me to create a comfortable environment for my family. I see where you're coming from, Layla. I guess I was just worried that you were overexerting yourself. It's hard for me to see you working so hard when I know how much you do for all of us already. I'm really worried about you these days, so please take good care of your health, okay? If you need anything, just call me. Thank you, Dean. Your support means a lot to me. And don't worry, I do take breaks and make sure to prioritize my well-being. You know, self-care and all that jazz. That's good to hear, Layla. It's important to take care of yourself. We all need a little R&R from time to time. Yeah, exactly. So, about why I've been doing this. It's actually kind of a secret, and I'm not entirely sure if it's the right thing to do, but I have my reasons. Oh, now you've piqued my curiosity. Spill the beans, Layla. I promise I'll keep it locked up tighter than Fort Knox. Well... It's about our son, Dean. What's wrong with him? Um, well, I actually am suspicious that he's been stealing our money behind our backs. Wait, what? You mean Jack? How could he? Yeah, hard to believe, right? Anyway, it's just my assumption. I haven't had any evidence to prove that. But it's been bothering me, and I needed to confide in someone I trust. Please don't tell anyone about this, okay? I don't want to hurt anyone, especially Jack. Don't worry, Layla. Your secret is safe with me. I understand your concerns, but I have to admit it's hard for me to believe that my son would do evil things like that. He always shows an obedient attitude towards me, and he seems like a really nice son. I just can't believe that he could be that mean, you know? You know, it's been quite a roller coaster lately with Jack. I mean, I totally get where you're coming from with your shock, but let me fill you in on what's been happening. It's not a surprise for me to accept it because, honestly, he's been a handful for a while now. I'm talking major naughtiness here. It's like he's on a mission to challenge everything I say and completely ignore any advice I try to give him. It's enough to drive any parent up the wall. Sometimes, I feel like he's intentionally pushing my buttons just to see how far he can go. Whoa, Layla, I had no clue things were this intense between you and Jack. 
Seriously, why didn't you give me a heads up? I would have swooped in like a superhero and had a serious talk with him about his behavior. I mean, come on, he's our son and we're in this together. I know, Dean. And I'm sorry for not opening up about it sooner. It's just that it's been a constant source of frustration for me, and I didn't want to burden you with it. I thought I could handle it on my own, you know? But lately, it's been getting worse. And that's why I've been contemplating if there's something more going on beneath the surface. It's like I'm missing a piece of the puzzle, and it's driving me crazy. You know what? A really huge amount of my money has been lost without any clues. Moreover, many of my precious accessories has been missing recently. You couldn't be the thief. I'm sure about that. That's why I think that Jack could be the potential suspect. Well, it's hard to conclude everything right now. Layla, listen to me. You don't have to carry this weight alone. We're partners, remember? From day one, we promise to always be there for each other through thick and thin. And the fact that you've been dealing with all of this without saying a word, even though it's about our own flesh and blood, worries me. And actually, I don't think that our son has to take the responsibility for any of this. But I'll assist you to find out the real thief, so don't worry about that. Please, promise me that you won't hesitate to tell me if anything happens. I'm your husband and I'm here to support you unconditionally. Always remember that, okay? You're right. I need to trust in our bond and lean on you when things get tough. I'm sorry for not fully embracing that partnership and for trying to shoulder that burden alone. It's not fair to either of us. And it's definitely not fair to Jack. I promise. From now on, I won't keep you in the dark about any challenges we face as a family. We're in this together. And together we'll figure it out. That's what I like to hear, Layla. It's all about trust and open communication. We can't tackle these parenting challenges effectively if we're not on the same page. We're a team and we need to have each other's backs. So no matter what happens, no matter how big or small, promise me you'll share it with me. I'm here to listen, to support, and to work through it together. Absolutely. I've realized how important it is to lean on our support system. We're not alone in this journey. We have friends, family, and even professionals who can offer guidance and advice. It's time for us to use those resources and seek help when we need it. We don't have to figure everything out on our own. And one more thing about Jack. If he messes with you just once again, I'll make him pay for that. You have my words. He'll have to bear my terrible anger. I promise you that. Dean. I appreciate your protective instincts, but let's not jump to conclusions and resort to extreme measures just yet. We need to approach the situation with fairness and understanding. It's important to remember that Jack is still our son, and he deserves a chance to learn from his mistakes and grow. While consequences are necessary, let's aim for constructive discipline rather than unleashing your terrible anger. You're right, Layla. I shouldn't let my anger cloud my judgment. We need to find a balance between holding Jack accountable and providing him with opportunity to make amends. Let's focus on guiding him towards the right path rather than simply punishing him out of anger. We can instill important values and help him learn from this experience. Hey Jack, are you up yet? What now? Stop bothering me. Don't you have some manners? What? Manners? What on earth are you talking about? I can't believe my ears. Are you angry at me? At your mother? Yes, so what? What's so weird about that? I'm an adult, see? I'm not that baby boy that was easy to order and manipulate before. So stop all your tricks and leave me alone. I just want to ask you about your new computer. How could you afford to buy it? I mean, based on your financial status, it's just weird for you to buy anything that pricey. What? What the hell are you implying right now? You're saying that I'm poor and therefore can't buy anything for myself? Oh, come on, Jack. Don't be so sensitive. I was just curious about how you managed to get your hands on such an expensive computer. It's not like I was insinuating that you're poor or anything. I was just genuinely surprised. 
considering your financial situation. Well, it sure sounded like you were implying that I can't afford nice things because I'm broke. And it's none of your business anyway. I don't need to explain my financial decisions to you or anyone else. I'm an adult, remember? I can make my own choices. Fine, fine. No need to get all defensive. I was just trying to make conversation. But if you don't want to share, that's your prerogative. I won't press the issue any further. Good, because I don't really feel like discussing my personal finances with you. It's my money, and I'll spend it how I please. Besides, it's not like I owe you any explanations. You know what, Jack? You're being really ungrateful right now. I'm your mother, and I have every right to ask about things happening in your life. Couldn't you just tell me just a little bit? Is that so hard for you to do? Well, I don't want to. Just that. Happy now? I don't want you to interfere in any of my stuff. I'll take care of my own things. No need to bother, okay? But it's just ridiculous. Your salary is just around $100 a month. You don't even have enough money to pay for this house's electricity bills alone. But it seems like you have a lot of money to spare on unnecessary things, don't you? So? If I don't even have any money left, then I do not deserve something of my own? Even a small laptop? How could you be so selfish to your own son? That's unbelievable. I can't imagine that my mother could become this mean and selfish. Oh, please, Jack. Don't try to guilt trip me with your accusations. I'm not being mean or selfish. I'm just concerned about your financial well-being. As your mother, it's my responsibility to make sure you're making wise decisions with your money. Wise decisions? Is that what you call it? Constantly questioning and criticizing my choices. I work hard for my money, and I have the right to spend it how I want, even if it doesn't align with your expectations. It's not about expectations, Jack. It's about practicality. You barely make enough to cover your basic expenses, and yet you're splurging on expensive gadgets? It just doesn't add up. I worry about your future and financial stability. Well, maybe you should trust me to manage my own finances. Maybe I have a plan, or a way to afford things that I want. Just because I don't meet your standards of what's practical, doesn't mean I'm being irresponsible or selfish. Trust you? After witnessing your poor financial decisions time and time again? I'm sorry, Jack, but it's hard for me to have blind faith in your choices when they seem so impulsive and reckless. Impulsive and reckless? That's how you see it? And what's wrong with that? Buying things for myself is guilt? It's just that you're jealous of me living and enjoying my life. That's why you decide to prevent me from buying things that I like, isn't it? Shut up! That's enough! I can't take it anymore! Just stop this meaningless conversation! I've had enough! Oh, now you want to take a break. Typical. Whenever things don't go your way, you just want to run away and avoid dealing with the real issues. Well, fine. I'm tired of trying to reason with someone who can't see past their own nose. Jack? Are you there at home? I've got a really urgent thing to tell you right now. Hey, what do you want? Anyway, I'm not at home now. I'm at my workplace, dealing with some paperwork. But what's so urgent that you have to call me at this time? Do you see my purse? It's the small blue one. This morning, I was so hurried to go to the supermarket that I left it on the kitchen table and forgot all about it. Oh? What purse? When I was out to work this morning, I didn't see any purses. You're just forgetful, as you always are. <laughs> but I remember I distinctly left it on the kitchen table. It can't be wrong. Ugh. You and your forgetfulness. It's like you have a talent for misplacing things and then blaming everyone else for it. I can't believe you're culling me in the middle of my workday for something as trivial as a lost purse. Can't you handle anything on your own? Well, excuse me for expecting a little support from my supposed partner. It's not like I intentionally lose things just to annoy you. And yes, I left it on the kitchen table. But clearly you're blind as a bat if you didn't notice it this morning. Typical. Blind as a bat? That's rich coming from someone who can't keep track of their own belongings. Maybe you should invest in a GPS tracker for your purse so you don't have to bother me with your absent-mindedness. And by the way, I'm not your personal assistant. 
I have my own responsibilities to take care of. So please stop being the victim and mind your own damn business. I'm focusing on my work and I don't want to give a damn about your missing stuff. It's exhausting. Are you sure that you're working? What do you even mean? I told you that I'm busy at work. Mom, are you deaf as well? Check this out. What? How could you have this photo? Where are you? So you didn't go to the market today, right? You lied to me? You're outside the window, right? Show yourself. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Well, it's funny to see you being scared. Anyway, yes, I lied to you about that. Well, at first I did have plans to go to the market, but then I just changed my mind and wanted to mock you a little bit. So I didn't go and waited out here for a couple of minutes. And eventually, I could catch you stealing my money red-handed. I have the evidence right here. So don't you dare make excuses for yourself. No, mom, please, you've got it all wrong. I wasn't trying to steal from you, I swear. I was just concerned about your safety and the security of your money. I wanted to make sure no one had taken it without you knowing. You have to believe me. I love you, mom. I would never do anything to hurt you. I can't believe you're trying to justify your actions with such a flimsy excuse. Checking my purse without my permission is a betrayal of trust, Jack. How could you treat your own mother like this? If you needed money, you could have asked me, and we could have found a solution together. But instead, you chose to deceive and disrespect me. I was afraid, Mom. Afraid that if I asked you for money to buy those things I wanted, you would have said no. I know it was wrong to resort to such desperate measures, but I was consumed by my desire for those items. Please, Mom, find it in your heart to forgive me. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right and earn back your trust. It's not just about the money or the things you wanted, Jack. It's about the breach of trust and the disrespect you've shown. This goes beyond material possessions. And as for your father, he deserves to know the truth. I can't shield you from the consequences of your actions. Perhaps facing his disappointment will be the wake-up call you need to learn from your mistakes. No, mom, please, reconsider. I'm begging you. You know how hot-tempered dad can be. I'm scared of what he might do if he finds out. I promise I'll change. I'll do anything to make it right. I don't want to lose your love or tear our family apart. Please, mom, have mercy on me. Three days had passed since I spilled the beans about Jax's misdeeds to Dean. As expected, Dean's reaction was explosive. I mean, he had always made it clear that the two types of people he despised the most were liars and thieves. And now, to his disappointment, his own son fell into both categories. Ouch. Talk about a double whammy. The consequences for Jack were swift and severe. Jack was then kicked out of our house without any money or property to bring along. When the reality of his punishment sank in, Jack's tears flowed freely as he desperately pleaded for our forgiveness. But let's be real here. That ship had sailed long ago. No amount of crying or begging could undo the damage he had caused. The trust had been shattered, and the consequences had to be faced.